What is going on guys, it's your boy GS and welcome to Inside My Mind Part 1 Where I'm just basically going to give you guys a rundown on what it is I'm thinking, why I'm thinking this, why I did what And all that good fun Madden knowledge stuff uh, This is an amazing game, like you definitely don't want to miss this game, it is absolutely amazing I will at some point edit it up and uh, you know give you guys a shorter version for everybody who doesn't have the time to check out you know the the lengthy version um, but it is an absolutely just amazing game I have the Vikings my opponent has the Lions and analyzing my matchup I, I feel confident that AJ Peterson is gonna be able to just run loose and do what he wants to do on offense you know because Lions don't really have a great run stopping defense and I don't really think I should have trouble running the ball with Adrian Peterson. If you have the Vikings, that's clearly what it is you want to do, right? You want to run the ball, you want to be successful on the ground, and you want to pass to a minimal only because you have that monster in the backfield. Defensively, I know it's not going to be easy to stop uh, Calvin Johnson. The guy is an absolute monster. I don't have nobody on this field that could even compete for half a route with this guy. So I definitely have to key in on him and make a lot of adjustments to try my best to make sure Calvin Johnson doesn't run loose. Now, one thing I don't want to do is allow him to have success running the ball. I need him to be one-dimensional, whether, uh, whether it's running or passing. Nonetheless, I need him to be one-dimensional because if he starts running and having success, then I'm going to have to try my best to stop the run. Then he could switch to the pass, and it's just too much. So one way or another, whatever he likes to do, best i have to stop what he likes to do least whenever he does do it i have to stop it that way he doesn't go to it so uh right off the rip we come out in quarters to give myself the best opportunity to stop the uh the pass i audible to a three four because this looks like a passing formation a running formation i should say so i audible to the three four in case he has to run i have a good chance of stopping that but it turns out it's actually a pass he drops back he's standing in the pocket um and he ends up going over there towards the left for a big conversion and that is what a lot of uh, opponents love to do right they love to do uh, wheels and fades wheels and fades wheels and fades that's pretty much what you see at least every uh, play you'll have at least one person running a route that is a wheel and a fade like those things are very very tough to stop and they're, they're not easy uh, right here he ends up running the ball he ends up getting a three yard gain and I just really need to shut down the run shut down the run that way i can have you know a better opportunity of stopping calvin because i can key in on him and not have to worry about the run uh right there just a huge missed tackle by me he broke the hell out of me right there and that just lets me know that that edge thing really isn't going to be working too much against the lions because i don't have anybody that can press him he's going to break the press easily i don't have anybody that you know if i had somebody that can get you know a little comfortable if I had anybody that can press just for a little bit you know I feel more confident running that but as it is I don't have anybody that can uh, press Calvin if you're running the edge sting if you do it uh, correctly pressure should get in almost immediately but you know I need to have Calvin on that press for about a second and a half right here I had an opportunity to take it back all the way but we just don't have the speed right there and then we end up getting injured right there so Offensively, we want to give it to uh, Adrian Peterson. There's no secret. So we come out in the weak formation out of the uh, I-form week. And we just want to see if he can, you know, stop the run. You know, and I really feel like he's not going to be able to. Because as we know, the Lions just really don't have that great of a running stopping defense. I mean, their defense just isn't great overall. So I'm liking my chances on being able to uh, provide a lot of Adrian Peterson, you know, to him. So... Um, as you see, we're going to the FL screen. I'm doing whatever I can to get Adrian Peterson the ball, whether it's screens, whether it's running the ball, whatever I got to do to give this man the ball. And uh, right there, nice tackle by him. I thought he was going to dive a little earlier, so I kept on the outside. Right here, we know how to we go to our split close formation where I have two wheels in the backfield, a drag, a skinny, and a post route. And um, I believe Adrian Peterson ends up just being wide open. Yeah, he sent the blitz. He blitzed a ton this game. He sent like the, the exact same blitz over and over and over and over again, which was like an inside blitz. I don't know what it was, but he left the flats so wide open. Like he continuously neglected the flats. And, you know, the more and more he kept neglecting the flats, the more I was going to go to it. So uh, 
right here back from the split close uh definitely my favorite formation from the coach book and we end up going to the power o and we don't get anything right there so i motion the guy on the far right to the outside because uh blocking seems to be a little bit better that gives me a better chance on actually hitting the outside more uh right here we go to the delay screen but i believe we go to rudolph because again look how wide open he is nobody's over there he sends the inside blitz leaving the fullback wheel route completely wide well actually that's a tight end completely wide open so i know huddle because you want to keep him in a bad defense you know if i find somebody completely wide open i'm going to know huddle because somewhere along the lines he made a mistake and i want to keep him in that defense so uh, right here we know huddle and we go to the um what is the offset split or whatever it's called look like i had a beautiful touch pass might have had the touchdown but rudolph doesn't get his feet in bounds definitely a nice throw by ponder nice touch pass right there we thought we might have had him on that wheel but we don't get anything so i was challenged because it was uh Actually, you know, I, I hit the left trigger to kind of get a, a bird's eye view of my uh, plate, but then I challenged it by mistake. You know, I'm not going to challenge that, you know. But anyways, we're really close to scoring, and I struggle in this part of the field a lot. So as you see, I want to play it safe, and I want to give the ball to Adrian Peterson. And this is what he can do. Just a quick little screen route with the agility and speed that he has. He ends up taking it for a touchdown. Just that easy. That simple. You give this guy the ball and he can make tremendous things happen. And he's the reason why you play with the Vikings, right? You don't pick the Vikings saying, you know, I'm about to drop 300 running yards and, and passing yards and kick four field goals and catch five touchdowns with Rudolph. Absolutely not. You get the Vikings to play with Peterson. So right now we're up 7-7. Seven seven and all I'm thinking is I need a mistake. I need him to make something happen i need him to throw me a pick force the fumble i need something to go my way so i can go up on this guy and make it make him a little bit more one dimensional so uh obviously uh last drive he scored really quickly at calvin johnson so at this point i'm thinking i gotta try and key on him as much as possible uh right here he goes and he runs the ball and that's exactly what it is i don't want you see i come out expecting pass i have heavy pass personnel on the field and it turns out to be a running play and that's exactly what it is i don't want because then i'm gonna try and stop that run and then he goes to a pass so it's like ah i need to limit the run to make him one dimensional so uh right there again trying to prepare for the run and he passes that's exactly what it is that i dislike about having somebody running the ball and having success on it because then they can just mix it up and, and obviously, I want to make things easier for me on defense as possible. When your defense is not good as mine, when you call it, you can just look at the, the plays I'm calling. Regular uh, two man others, cover two, um, sink, you know, nothing special, just really regular plays. And then, you know, him running the ball. And then it's like, damn, if I don't stop this, I'm going to be in trouble. So in order for me to have success on defense, what I like to do is uh, tr just try and key on one aspect of the ball. Obviously, on defense uh, I want him to pass the ball or run the ball one you know exclusively that way it makes it easier for me on defense you know he's definitely messing me up by passing running running passing not only is he passing running running passing but when he runs the ball he's doing great right so he can go to it anytime he wants and right there he hits me deep with who was that Burleson who scored a touchdown so now it's 14 to 7 now I feel like I'm gonna have trouble defensively like I'm not gonna be able I mean the Vikings have a decent defense if you know what it is you're doing I need defenses like the Raiders, I mean the Raiders, the Ravens, the Niners, the Steelers. Defenses that can pretty much do everything on their own. You know, the Vikings is not one of that defense. You know, so uh, I need to pick the right plays and try and be strategic on defense to force a mistake. You know, if I'm going to go ahead and make something happen defensively. So offensively, see, we're going right back to the, the plays that's going to go ahead and give Adrian Peterson the ball. Uh, I form weak screen trying to give AP the ball. Quick little pass over there. And a nice run, you know, nice gain, breaks a tackle. That guy, he's just biblical. There's nothing else you can say about that man other than the man is absolutely biblical. So, again, I'm trying to give the ball to him as, as you know, much as possible. And when I do pass the ball, uh, you know, I'm looking to keep it short. Ponder doesn't have the best accuracy. He throws a lot of rubber duckies. So, you know, I got to make sure I keep it in his accuracy range where he's able to complete uh you know the ball more often than not you know the more you go downfield the less accurate it's going to be so right here back to split close we're looking for that skinny if i don't have it i'm looking for the drag and again he's neglecting that wheel route from the uh tight end slot on the backfield he's leaving it wide open continuously calling that blitz and he has nobody over there in the flats to cover that so uh if he doesn't make an adjustment i'm gonna continue to look for that so again we are back to the split close and i definitely like what i'm seeing 
uh, defensively, offensively, I should say. I, I really don't feel like he's going to be able to make a stop on just the small routes that I'm running. So we go back to it. This time we're looking for the skinny heavily, so we blocked more, but that drag was open. Uh, he's really having trouble defending these short routes, and if he doesn't make any adjustments again, I'm going to continue to throw at his weak spot. He's blitzing up the middle. He's leaving weak spots over the flats. So we go to the FL screen, figuring it's going to be open. That's exactly what it is because he's not playing these flats at all. And just look at the, the agility that Adrian Peterson possessed. So let's get into the second quarter. All right, so we're getting into the second quarter, and already I like what I'm doing offensively. Defensively, not so much, right? He had two possessions, and he scored rather easily. So I definitely got to try and make some type of adjustments to stop him. But, you know, as long as we go on tit for tat, I always feel like eventually you're going to make a mistake where uh, I feel confident that I'm not going to offensively. So, all right, here we motion that guy to give us a little bit more room on that outside, but he comes in immediately and stops the run. So I'm, I'm really having no success running the ball, but I'm having tremendous success passing the ball. So, again, I got to play to his type of play style. He's shutting down my run, but his pass is just um, not doing too good. So right here, I look for the motion fade, but notice how he didn't follow me. So we go to that motion fade again, and look who's wide open on the flats again. Adrian Peterson, we end up scoring a touchdown. Again, I don't know what type of defense he is calling, but thumb flats are just butt naked. So at this point, it's 14 to 14, and all I'm thinking is let's please get ourselves a stop. Let's put the pressure on him and see if this is the type of guy who is comfortable playing from behind because I know I'm never comfortable playing from behind because I know that if you stop me, you go up two possessions. I always feel confident that I can score, but am I going to be able to stop you multiple times? That I'm too iffy about. So, you know, uh, I always want to try my best to put you in a tough situation to see if, you know, how you're able to play, you know, from behind. So uh, it all starts here. You know, it all starts on the defensive side of the ball. I cannot win if I can't stop him. That's point blank. I need a stop or two. Right here, we're playing for the run, and he passes. And he's been doing the opposite of what it is I'm thinking the last few drives. Right? I come out. Trying to stop the run, he passes. I come out trying to stop the pass, he runs. So now it's just like he is just completely got me mind boggled here, and I'm not having any success whatsoever on defense. He is just running down the field with no problem whatsoever. So again, uh, you don't see me calling the edge sting because I don't want to leave that one on one with Calvin Johnson. Right there, he goes over the middle. He tried to hit me with a skinny, but he does drop it due to the contact, and uh, that's always a uh, good thing when Calvin Johnson drops the ball, you know, because that means don't drop too many of them. So you always got to be thankful for the ones that he does drop. So second and ten would be big if he passes here and we stop him. Let's try and get our let's try and get him to a big third down. You know, we want to get him in those type of plays where he's forced to, you know, try and come through. So right here, I decide to, uh, you know, play man to man defense, make sure everybody's covered up, and we get a little bit of pressure there. And now it's a big third down. This is exactly what it is that we want, right? We want to put him in a position where he needs to make clutch things happen. So now I know he's going to pass. It's third and ten. There's no secret he's going to pass. So now I feel like, you know, let me try to get some ed uh, edge pressure with the edge thing here. And let me try my best to go ahead. And notice I'm covering Calvin myself, figuring he's probably going to go to an out route or a comeback route. And we hit him as he throws the ball. So that was huge. Fourth down, of course, he's going to go for it. Nobody ever punts the ball. That's why I, I can't punt the ball because... You know, eventually, you know, if I keep punting and you keep going for a fourth down, you're eventually going to score. <laughs> uh, you know, right here, we try to play safe, just try and play uh, pass coverage. And he throws right into coverage, and we get a stop, and we have the ball really, really, really close to the end zone. So that right there is good. You know, we put him in a tough situation on fourth and ten. We're finally able to force him to pass the ball, knowing he's going to pass the ball. And we were able to get ourselves a good stop there. So, all right, we switch it to the run. We're just trying to get Adrian Peterson going. You know, uh, just look at that agility that he has, man. The way he just weaves in and out with just the drop of a dime is absolutely amazing. Four rushes, nine yards, not where you want to be with Adrian Peterson whatsoever. That's definitely not uh, the type of success I'm looking to have on the ground. So, after that big run play, I'm only a yard away from the first down. So, I'm definitely going to run the ball and try to get it. We end up calling... Uh, Look at that broken tackle, though. That only Adrian Peterson is going to be. Look at that agility, though. Just, yo, Adrian Peterson. I mean, I don't need to I, I don't need to let you guys know how good this man is. This guy, he's just pure biblical, right? So this is the area of the field I struggle 
immensely. I have so much trouble on this side of the field, so I'm um, gonna try and go to the iPhone. We just crawl, uh, call a, a screenplay. Hope it works. But he sniffed that out uh, all the way. As soon as I hiked it, he knew exactly what it was I wanted to do, and he shut that down right away. So you know, we know how to thinking that we should be able to uh, just catch him off guard with a quick pass and we're, we're looking we got that drag route so we read precision we inside uh, precision and we get Rudolph right there anytime I see me and me that drag with the reposition up to a streak is 99.9% .9 always gonna be open uh, right here we know how to the FL screen like I said this is my goal line package man um, but he manually covered that and he ended up uh, just sack me right up the gap with Sue. So we end up taking our points. You know, a lead is a lead, right? So, you know, we have a 17 to 14 lead. We're not feeling confident, you know, not as confident as we would like to be. You know, we definitely feel like we, we had a great opportunity to score a touchdown right there, but unfortunately we weren't able to. But we did take the lead. So that right there is always, always a good thing. Whenever you have the lead, is always, you can't complain about gaining the lead. So. Um, right, I'm thinking another stop and we're going to be good, right? One more stop and we should be okay. We should be able to hopefully, you know, uh, put a stop and hopefully capitalize on that uh, mistake or, you know, however it is I'm able to get the ball back. So uh, I come out in quarters inside blitz and I put the two guys blitzing on purples, but then he hits me deep over the top. And again, that's just my fault. I don't have the speed to keep up with Bur And he keeps just breaking the hell out of me with no problem. You know, I, I don't have the speed on the field to really, you know, keep up with them. They do have, was it Sheryl's or I'm not sure. They have somebody at 96 speed, but I have him um, on my depth chart. So he is able to uh, blitz. And when I do the edge thing, it's him blitzing, you know. So I got that 96 speed shooting through that A-gap. Now, the problem is that they don't have, like how they had in previous Maddens, where you can specifically put up. And then, I mean, really, I mean... I fumbled the ball right there. There's no, I mean, oh my God, man. Real, I fumbled the ball. There's nothing more frustrating than just giving up a fumble, especially since I would have had ball right before halftime. Not to mention, I get ball back at halftime. So, I mean, I really just fumbled the ball right there. Oh, man, there's nothing more frustrating than unfortunate things like that happening. Like, that was just really out of my control. You can't really stop a fumble. Even if you hold the cover-up, the RB, you still fumble. I fumble plenty of times trying to cover up the ball. So, I mean, uh, now he's in a great position. Now I got to try my very best to try and stop him, uh, hold him to a field goal. So, holding the people to field goal, this right here would definitely be a key part to try and hold him to a field goal. I felt like he was going to milk the clock. So, I want to try and get this ball back. So, I call timeout just to save 18 seconds. So he can hurry up and call a play so we can see if we can stop him to a field goal and get this ball back and try to tie it up before halftime. So, you know, right now it's like he has lots of options. He can run. He can pass second and fourth. So we come out and cover two sink, hoping he's going to pass. He runs the ball. Most likely he's going to get the first down. We're just hoping that he ends up passing the ball here. And we're trying to cover the middle because that's really the weak point of the uh, cover two sink is that middle. Uh, he does actually pass and he didn't get the first down, which is huge. So... Uh, not to mention that stopped the clock, so the two-minute warning didn't even come yet, up yet. So now it's third and four, and we really feel like we shouldn't even be in this damn position because of that fumble. But nonetheless, you know, he has a chance to score, and hopefully it's not a touchdown. He decides to pass again. He's standing in the pocket. He's looking. He rolls over towards the left. He has all day. It is a holding call, so he ends up just throwing it out of bounds, and we end up. Uh, I'm, I think I declined. I'm not sure. I don't even remember what I did. We'll find out in a second, but. Um, Let's see what is it that did I decline or did I accept? Oh, I declined it. Look at the ballsy move. Look at the ballsy move declining it. <laughs> so he ends up, uh, I believe, kicking his field goal, going up 24 to 17, going up a full touchdown. And of course, I'm upset about it. It's like he shouldn't even be up right now. You know, he was already up. But, I mean, he didn't deserve that. I mean, what was it? I, I don't know if it was him or the computer, but nonetheless, it was a fumble on a kickoff play by Percy Harvin, who's one of the best kickoff return men in the league. His overall has to be 99. If it's not, it's 97, 98. He's definitely one of those as a kickoff return man. And he fumbled? It's like, really? Like, come on, man. So now I have the challenge of trying to score before halftime. And uh, this is a, not really a must because we get the ball back. But, you know, it would be great if we're able to score. That way we can go into halftime with the opportunity to regain the lead. So... You know, right here, we definitely got to pass the ball downfield. Running really isn't going to help me at this point. So we go back 
to the split close and again he's leaving the mid just the flats wide open the, that short middle with the drag and the wheel rods from the backfield he's leaving those guys completely open and until he makes those adjustments i'm gonna continue going to that uh, right here we try to hit him with the screen but peterson decides to turn in to an all-star left tackle all of a sudden and he wants to hold the block for 15 seconds forcing me to throw out of bounds i was just trying to sneak a quick play in there to get adrian peterson the ball uh, unfortunately, it just doesn't work out the way I want to. So, with the minutes some change left, I know I have to go downfield. I really want to hit this skinny route. I really haven't gone to it yet. But he's leaving these flats too wide open. Not to mention he's doing things like that, blitzing. And look at the broken tackle by Ponder. That was such a huge broken tack, uh, sack right there. Look at look at Rudolph, though. Look at Rudolph rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Wow. That was all due. I mean, I guess that's payback for him getting that dumbass fumble, right? Ponder breaking the sack and then finding that uh, wheel rough in the backfield wide open. So, again, going into the second, I'm already thinking of what it is, how it is I'm going to attack him next half, right? Because that you always want to, it's like chess, man. You always want to be a couple moves ahead. You never want to be in the right now move. You know, I, I'm always thinking on what it is I'm going to do next uh, while it is I'm um, doing what it is I'm doing now. So, I'm already thinking that these flats are, are being, you know, just butt naked completely. And I need, it, I need to continue to uh, attacking the flats. You know, he's leaving them open. And I have no problem keep going to that um, continuously until he makes an adjustment. So, hopefully we can get a stop here and bring this tie game into overtime. I mean, why do I keep saying overtime? I'm in the halftime. And I do get the ball back. So, right now, 24-24. Not much defense is going on. You know, but we have stopped each other once. I stopped him on a turnover on downs. He actually got a fumble. So, uh, we both received an extra possession. And right now, of course, you guys know how my defensive attributes just drop all the way down whenever it's halftime. You know, right before halftime, I just drop down and I go, I don't know. My, like, my IQ, it drops all the way down to a tow truck. I cannot play defense before half. I don't know what it is. But, again, cover two seek is one of my favorite plays because it guards the first down marker. You know, a lot of people like out routes and things like that. So, that right there is going to prevent that or come back routes. Um, right here, he has a lot of receivers out. And, again, he goes to... I believe that was a uh, fade, uh, but we end up stripping that ball as soon as he uh, caught it. We uh, hit that B, then LB, try and draw the bar loose, and thankfully that happens. Now, he has one timeout and expecting him to go downfield a lot. So, because that last play was so wide open, I want to put a little bit more pressure on him. So, I'm calling the edge thing to go to the outside. And notice I'm manually trying to run over there out to Calvin Johnson, but I just did not have enough time. But I believe he makes a mistake by staying in bounds. He should have went out of bounds. He should have noticed that I was coming to protect that inside, that outside. He might have been able to uh, break in the computer, but, um, you know, not the both of us. So, uh, right here, again, we just try to call the edge thing, try to call quick pressure. And, again, he stays in bounds. You know, I think he's making a mistake by doing that. And he was forced to burn his last timeout. So, that right there was huge. Now, he has no timeouts. Uh, again, cover to sink to try and stop him from getting in field goal range. That them yellow zones are going to are going to go ahead and play that uh, the first down markers. All right, there so he goes deep over the middle, and he ends up getting the ball. And now it's just like, damn. You know, nothing worse. Again, I just don't know what it is before halftime. My, I don't know, man. But it looks like he's going to go ahead and score. So he's calling no huddles. We look like we're just going to run the edge thing. Hopefully we can catch him off guard and create a little bit of eight gap pressure. But he has it locked up pretty well. But we end up getting the pressure. And instead of either throwing the ball out of bounds, he ends up running and he gets a completion and then he no huddles right here and now it's like okay now it's getting a little bit worried uh he might be able to score a touchdown that would be devastating at this point we cannot give up a touchdown we do not want to go into halftime with the lead and i mean with down uh so right here he calls the play he decides to move a little bit inside outside the pocket everything is pretty much locked down he takes off and we end up sacking him and instead of him going to the play selection screen and uh, kicking a field goal, he decides to pick a passing play, which is such a huge mistake. He easily could have had that field goal. It only takes as soon as you pick field goal, you're already lined up. So I thought this right here was a huge mistake of him not being able to call that. He didn't even hike the ball. Um, well, he did hike the ball off. I'm sorry, and he ends up going over the middle, but we stopped that. So that's the end of the half, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll get later on into the next one.